Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, hello, my name is AJ Kuftik, and I'm a principal technologist here at Expedient. I want to thank you for joining me today. Today, we're talking about mission-driven IT with uh, Hugh St. Martin from Ayers. Hi, Hugh. How are you doing today? Doing great. Thanks. Uh, just a real quick uh, housekeeping note. If you ask, if you have any questions, please ask them. If you ask when you're entered to win a prize, that prize today is a $100 Best Buy gift card. Uh, and all of this is being recorded. So if you have to step away, um, if you uh, if you have to step away, this will be on our website, uh, go.expedient.com slash webinar replays, youtube.com slash expedient, instagram.com slash underscore expedient, and on linkedin.com slash expedient. Hey, everybody on LinkedIn Live. Hope you're having a great day. Also, if you have any questions, please enter them about here into the Q&A panel. Uh, that helps us keep track of all the questions and make sure that they get answered. Uh, so today joining me is Hugh St. Martin from Ayers. Uh, Ayers is a, uh, a, a client of ours. Uh, and Hugh, kind of tell me, tell me kind of what the Airs story is, right? You know, what is what is Airs, and what do you guys do? Sure. So uh, Airs is a corporate relocation company, right? And you know, a lot of times when you hear that, people might be thinking moving trucks and boxes, and of, and of course we do that, but uh, we do a lot more. You know, think of us as more like a concierge service, everything that you could possibly need. So let's say AJ, you get promoted to El Presidente for life, or it's Hugh. Oh. And you have decided you're going to live in, uh, let's say, Brazil. And so you're going to set up shop. And you need, you know, the best moving company, the best logistics support company uh, to transfer you from Pittsburgh, beautiful, glorious Pittsburgh, uh, down to Brazil. So, of course, we're going to show up with the boxes and everything. But it's more than that. We also will take care of your kids. We'll get you out of your school here and get them transferred to your school down there. We'll take care of your immigration. We'll take care of your visas. We'll do cultural assimilation. You need some. You need somebody to tour you around the town down there. You need some language skills. You need somebody to uh, be your, you know, your assistant to get you settled in. We're the right fit. Then once you're there, we will support you the entire time that you're running all of Expedient from your from your penthouse suite uh, down there in Brazil. And so we do that through our software platform. Uh, our platform supports all of these transfers, not just during the move but also while they're in country and uh, taking care of their job. So our client would be expedient, but the transferee, you, is also you know, one of our, you know, our individual clients that we're looking after. So all of the bills that come, that are associated with you being down there in Brazil, uh, come through our platform. You pay, everything comes through our platform while we take care of you and take care of our client expedient. I mean, that sounds amazing. Because you know, living in Brazil would probably be pretty warm. <laughs> you know, I need. How do I get? Yeah. Well, we. I guess we got to talk later. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to move somewhere warm. So, kind of, you know, it, as as you're trying to help these people, you know, transfer from you know their current location to a new one. You know, how does IT actually play into that? And what was Air's goal with Expedia? What was that primary goal? Sure. So uh, we'll start with first. Uh, as some people have experienced, moving can be one of the most uh, traumatic, stressful things that ever happens in their lives. You know, and that's a lot of stress involved in that. And so, you know, while IT isn't the cornucopia, it's not going to fix everything. There's a lot that we can do to alleviate somebody's stress and and help them through our constant communication. So we've been using our platform to provide more and more avenues of communication to the transferee. So that while they're on the road, they can you know, peel on their phone real fast and say, you know, where's my stuff? You know, when is the plane arriving? And all of the things like, where's my paycheck? You know, and I have this bill I have to upload. And we can support all that to alleviate a lot of that stress that, that you might be feeling as you're moving down to Brazil. And it gives the client, it gives the expedient great visibility on your status, where you're at, because of course they're interested in getting down there and getting spun up right away and getting right back to work. And we provide a lot of that status and, and visibility so they know where's AJ stuck? When is it going to get there? When is he going to be in the office? Where's his apartment going to be? And all of those kinds of things. Uh, so yeah, so that's what that's what IT can do to help facilitate uh, communication, facilitate uh, situational awareness, and then of course track everything and make sure that the data and the money is flowing like it should be. So, so then and then the goal of doing this with Expedient was to help focus on that, right? Right. So here's the thing. Airs is growing. 
And our teams are really focused on our clients, just like your teams are really focused on your clients. And while Airs is growing, we don't want to lose that focus. That, that client experience, that customer service, that's really a huge trademark for Airs. We're consistently one of the market leaders in, in, our, in our sector for customer service. And, and that is absolutely what we pride ourselves on. And so while Airs is growing, we don't want to lose focus on that. That's our niche, right? So we need account because our enterprise is growing, our network is growing, everything's getting bigger, and we want our team to stay focused on our clients. So I needed somebody that could help me with all of the daily nuts and bolts of running an enterprise, everything from the operating system to monitoring and patching. If I need more resources, I need them spun up real quickly, you know, and, and expertise that goes with managing that if something comes up. Well, you know, we, we started looking around and uh, it was kind of a no-brainer. Expedient is right here in Pittsburgh with us, and uh, you guys fit the bill perfectly. And so when we fit into that, it's really to provide that extra time for your people so that they can actually focus on, you know, enabling these moves to go as smoothly as they are and, and to provide new features into that. And we talked, uh, just to peel back the curtain a little bit, everybody, we have a little, time, <laughs> right? We like to, we, we have a chat and it turns out that Hugh and I actually worked together in the past, which was very funny. Hugh and I actually worked two cube rows away from each other at a previous job and never actually met. Um, the corporate world was amazing. But you talked a lot about strategic intent. And I found that to be very, very interesting. So can you explain strategic intent and how, Expedient kind of fits into that overall strategy and the intent of your strategy. Sure. So as I mentioned, airs is growing, you know, and we're seeing our overseas demand get, you know, grow more and more. And we needed the ability to scale. Uh, we needed the ability to spin up resources. And as we add more clients and we add more, more capabilities to our platform, obviously we need to help on the on the infrastructure side. And as I said, our long-term goal was to get more and more into um, customer service and, uh, and the mobility of the platform and expedient because of the, uh, all of the areas of the physical locations that you provide gives us a lot more of that uh, uh, ability to spread our services around the world uh, and to have cloud or, you know, or let's call it co-managed data services, data center services, uh, which then allows me again to focus on building my platform, building new capabilities, quickly delivering these capabilities to our new clients that we're bringing on. And then I can just turn around and, you know, I hate to say this, but turn around and give you all the, all the rough work of, you know, taking care of all the patching and, you know, where's my availability rates and uh, what, what's going on with our tickets and that kind of stuff, freeing us up to focus on our clients. And so when you start to bring this sort of thing in, you start going into the, you know, the actual migration itself mm -hmm. to actually come on board, how did that actual migration go? So uh, it was. I, I will tell you, it's a mixed bag, right? And and it's just like anything. There's there's a spectrum of things that can happen, and it's never one or the other. It's always typically the story is somewhere in the middle. And while it was very nice, as soon as we started migrating into the new environment, the expedient environment, we started seeing availability rates go up right away. Uh, but the migration itself, there were times when it was a little bumpy, you know. And, and some of that was on our end. Uh, because of communications and expectations. Uh, and some of it was on your end in that, you know, you weren't sure what we, what our expectations were. And so what I would encourage everybody to do, and, and really that this is not IP that we're talking about. This is just, this is just business. This is running an enterprise. Teams have to understand what the, what the long-term intent is, where we're trying to go, what the expectations of the other teams are. And the way to do that is through good communication. You know? And so, uh, there, the times that were things were a little bit bumpy, well, we weren't communicating very well. You know, I didn't pick up the phone and I call AJ and say, hey, you know, I'm moving another 100 servers over on Sunday. You know, so uh, what I would encourage everybody to do is exactly that. Uh, make sure that everybody's communicating the plan very clearly uh, so that we can, so we can anticipate those expectations and plan for them. I think the, the interesting part there was kind of, it, you, you, you I can see where if you have, you know, some of that, those bumps in the road and some of that miscommunication that can lead to some, a, a lower level of trust. So how do you help build that trust 
overall, right? You can't just like trust fall with the cloud. I don't think you can do that, right? No, and, and you know, I, I like to start off with trust. You know, I mean, trust my partners uh, because we're all IT professionals. I believe that we all want the same thing. We all want everybody to be successful. Uh, but sometimes when there's those bumps, you know, it causes people to be a little, a little more suspicious. Um, so how do you overcome that? Well, you know, again, email is great, uh, but the best way to do that is to develop that relationship. You know, and what I what I talk to my teams about is that you know when you when you badge in the work, I don't care if the badge says you're a full time employee or you're a contractor support or you're a partner vendor like Expedient. You know, we're all on the same team. You know, and so in that, we have to make sure we all understand what's going on and we can't treat one team member differently than the other. And, and we can't treat one team member, you know, by saying, hey, here's what we're doing, but not sell expedient. That's not going to work out well for any of us, right? And so to build that trust, what I'm trying to try to uh, develop the culture, thinking that, you know, we're all on the same team. Think of us as all on the air's team. You know, and so when I have something going on, the first thing I do is I pick up the phone and I call the ask and say, hey, this is what I'm seeing. What are you seeing? And then we jump on a call and we compare notes. And as we're as we develop success, success stories and we find things and we fix things, you know, any of the bumps that might have happened in the past, they start to be forgotten because we, we have another success and another success. And then after a while, we understand the processes on your on your end, the processes on our end. And then after we understand that, we kind of meet in the middle, like I said, uh, then really you start to have that trust. Uh, that we go through. And I think it, at one point you referred to IT as a team sport, <laughs> which I thought was actually a, a brilliant because it, especially as you mentioned, and everybody out here, you know, this isn't just an expedient thing. You probably have other vendors. You have a virtualization vendor, a server vendor, a network vendor, a storage vendor. Maybe you have hyper-converged and all of that can be under maybe one or two vendors. but we all kind of play in the same sandbox, right? We're all sure. trying to do the same thing. So how does how does that team sport sort of play into that? And you, you kind of touched on it a little bit. Yeah, so, uh, you know, it, it's when you see it and you think, you know, the classic uh, rub in the team sport is offensive defense. You know, you've got maybe the security team and the infrastructure team, it's this bad. And sometimes there can be a, a little bit of a natural uh, friction between the teams. But everybody has to understand that it's a long-term intent. So Really, I kind of see myself more as a, as a coach, helping everybody understand, here's what we're trying to get. You know, it's that meeting in the middle so that everyone understands, this is what we're, this is what we're doing, this is how we're going to execute. And a sysadmin can't go and run and do something and not expect that it's going to impact, you know, one of our users or worse, one of our clients. You know, so we always have to make sure that we have, you know, that, that long-term goal in mind. You know, we're taking care of our clients, we're taking care of those transferees. Nobody can operate in a vacuum because if anybody does anything in the environment, it could affect everybody else, whether that's security, whether that's expedient with the operating system, somebody on my end, new platform release, it, it's all tied together. So the team has to all understand each other's roles and responsibilities. And they have to understand that if I'm going to do this, I could be impacting these other teammates. I need to make sure they know what's coming so that they can highlight that there's going to be an issue. Uh, or, you know, we can make sure that it's a nice smooth rollout and the client's super happy and they have the new capabilities and, you know, it's all rainbows and unicorns. My daughter will appreciate, my daughter will appreciate that unicorn. <laughs> um, so now that you've moved into the platform, you mentioned that avail availability rates were going up. So what has Expedient done for your overall operations? So, well, and I mentioned earlier, you know, you, you took over a lot of the operating system maintenance. You provide me my, my base infrastructure. If I need something, I pick now, I just pick up the phone and call. Yeah, and say, hey, this is what I need. And then we, we take care of it. Um, so that'll, that's allowed my guys to start focusing on getting new capabilities delivered and also growing our depth of expertise on our tool sets and what we're trying to do to elevate our game. Uh, to kind of the next level, you know, the maturity model. We're working our way up the stack as we get better and better at what we're doing, better and better at uh, implementing the tools and our new capabilities. So uh, Expedient has freed my team up to focus more on those kinds of things, new capabilities, new clients, growing our own skill set. Uh, with Expedient taking over a lot of the day-to-day -day grind, they put it that way, but that's what's happening. 
Uh, it's allowed my guys to focus on their own personal development as well, so that they can go get new skills for you know, emerging technology. So that's really helped us you know, move to the next level. Yeah, when we talked earlier, you mentioned like a distinct percentage drop in tickets. Oh, yes. So um, I, I said earlier that, uh, you know, we started seeing availability rates go up. A lot of little uh, ash and trash noise in the background started going down. And of course, we track availability. We track, you know, problems and tickets. And uh, when we started the migration, we started seeing a slow, steady decline in 2020. And the migration took a little while in 2020, but overall, we saw a 12.5% reduction in our break fix. That's anything that could have happened out there uh, from software to hardware, but because of the availability rates going up, it means our break fix tickets go down. It means that my clients, my customers, inside theirs, much happier. And because the availability rates are up, it means our clients and our transfers are much happier because when they get on the phone to see where their stuff is, it's right there. They can see it. A lot less money. So yeah, 12.5% uh, reduction in break fix over the course of last year. And we're actually still seeing that trend here. This continues this year. The first quarter of, of 2021, that decline has uh, continued in this first year as well. So we're very, very happy about that. And when you're not, break fix are like rework action, right? Because some, something you did is now not working. You have to go back and rework it to fix it. Well, with, with that going down, it allowed us to free ourselves up for the new capabilities and new, new projects. Uh, so that's really that's really a huge frustration factor off our plate that we're not going back and working on the same thing over and over again. And that's actually one of those things that <clears throat> I've talked about in the past. And if you've been a regular uh, attendee of these webinars, uh, the folks out there have probably seen me talk about the difference between projects and work and how that unplanned work and yeah. removing that and removing the planned work of the things like patching and maintenance all of that time frees up now you have the ability because everybody always complains like oh we can't do that we don't have time to do that i have to deal with all this other stuff well, what if you didn't what if you actually got to focus on those sorts of things and i think that's what you're seeing you see a 12.5 percent you know decline in break fix tickets that's 12.5 percent of tickets you don't have to deal with anymore Right. And when you see that line continue to go down, that's just more time you have to actually focus on the bigger things. So now it's actually time to put the rubber to the road and actually go do those things. Um, if you guys have any questions, please uh, enter those into the Q&A panel. We really, really appreciate that. You know, Hugh, what's sort of what's next for heirs right now that you guys have all of this time? What are you going to do with it? <laughs> So uh, as we have grown and we've gained more clients, uh, clients have you know pressure requests, and so we're tailoring our software, we're tailoring our platform uh, to meet those requests, and then we're working on greater and greater mobility, greater and greater flexibility. You know, I think we've heard uh, a lot of clients, a lot of people in the industry talk about agile and quicker delivery of new capabilities. So we're definitely moving in that direction so that we can have maybe smaller but quicker implementation of uh, new tools, new features uh, to meet the demand of, of all, all of our new clients that we're bringing on board. Uh, and as we do that, one of the big things that we've seen is um, data distribution. You know, the overseas demand, we've seen this pick up a lot where clients are asking for, for their data to be housed locally. And so that's a big challenge that we are working with you on to, to see how we can have a data, distributed data architecture while we have centralized processing taking care of it. And I think that's that's a really interesting thing to kind of talk through is not just right, we have this wonderful set of services, but we can actually work with companies like Ayers to actually help figure out how to solve those problems before we even may have a product, a distinct product to go do that. We want to help and we can be flexible to do that. And I think so that distributed data architecture can actually be a really, really interesting way to enable the business, right? Not everything has to come back to the US. If somebody's connecting from, you know, Greece, China, India, other parts of the world that are very much on the opposite side of this sphere uh, than, than we are. And I think that that extra time is really the, the capability there. Do you see that line continuing to go down in terms of number of tickets? Like, 
is this based on like infrastructure tickets or is this operating system tickets? You know, kind of, can you break down a little bit more on that, on that data? So our first look was anything that was a break fix, uh, software, infrastructure, all of that. Uh, and of course, you know, they're tied together. Uh, you know, uh, uh, an impact on your database can take down a server and vice versa. Uh, but overall, yeah, absolutely. What I, as I said, uh, Q1 of this year, we continue to see that downward trend. And a lot of it is the availability of both the software and the hardware. Now, it's IT, so there are always going to be issues, uh, but we've gotten better at working with our partners, our teammates. Uh, when we see an issue, call them up and say, hey, take a look at this server. This is what we're seeing. You know, is it something that we're doing on the data side? Is it something we're doing on the application? Or is there something else going on with the hardware? And then we, you know, we pull the problem apart and fix it, just like you would do if it was all in house. But yeah, I see that trend continuing with the break fix going down. Uh, one other thing I would point out is uh, we had a huge disaster recovery exercise in the first part of this year, Q1 of this year. And we learned a lot because it was the, the biggest VR exercise we've ever done as a, as a company. Uh, and it was successful. And we operated our entire uh, production environment from our distant location. And so as we, you know, we proved that we can do that, and that distant location might be domestic or, or it might not. You know, that improved service as our clients are more and more overseas, we've now proven that we can we can host our production environment uh, from a very different location. And I think that's those are the sorts of things where you now have the capability to test DR like you've never tested DR before. And I think you and I had talked about that, that you'd never really done a full DR test. You've yeah. done a kind of DR test. Yeah. You've done a like a little fudged test, but running full production out of DR, that's yeah. serious business. It was. And uh, my background in the military, you know, that was a, a real big key for the military as full up exercise. And so that was something that we developed so that we brought into the air's uh, culture as well. Uh, and, you know, of course, we were a little nervous. We hadn't done it before. Uh, but, you know, with the full team support, uh, it came off really, really well. Uh, we, were surprised. I don't want to say surprised by the by the by the production or by the performance, uh, but it was kind of smooth, you know. And and we learned a lot, you know. There were bumps along the way, but uh, we know that the next year exercise and even the little mini things that we're doing in between uh, are getting better and better, easier and easier for us to handle. And I think that's actually a key sort of point in, you know, you you learn and get better. Right. I think sometimes this is one of the things where, and I struggle with this as a parent sometimes, is that my son or my kids, if they don't get it right the first time, they're like, this is wrong and I don't ever want to do this again. And it's like, but it's the same sort of thing that as we go, as you've gone forward, as we go forward as technologists, that it may not work right the first time. Right. Or you may you learn something up. like, yeah, you don't give up. You say, you know what? This could be better. Hey, if we actually make this small change, this could be much, much better. And I think you guys saw that as part of your DR testing. Yeah, exactly. You know, the, the iterative process improvement, and and that's exactly right. You know, just if if IT was easy, you know, anybody would do it. Uh, or if there was ever a problem in IT and we would all quit, that that's not viable either. Of course, there's going to be issues. Uh, and and the and the the real the real mark of success is how you address those issues. And you come together as a team. Like I said a while back, you pull it all apart, you find out what happened, maybe there were multiple factors going on there, and then you make sure that you fix that to the right uh, And the process, like I said, we've experienced already, getting better and better, easier and easier uh, as our teammates, as all of us, uh, grow in our ability to communicate and execute our operations. And uh, th uh, we have a question here. What do you do about legacy apps? Something uh, that runs something like VB6, something pretty old. Yeah, so uh, we, and we had some, we had some older applications too. Uh, and so we have to work, you know, with, with the senior to make sure that we have fixed those off. There are, so that as you're, as you're doing an update or you're doing a patch or anything like that, you don't break an old application that might be uh, fragile, might be, uh, you know, a little, a little brutal, you know, and so you, you, you know, sadly, you might even be operating on 2012 or, or before it's even something older. And so you just have to make sure that, uh, you know, that those are those weird exceptions that everybody on the team has to understand. This is an exception. It's an operational requirement. This is why we have to have it. 
you know, sometimes it's a risk you have to have to accept for a while until the new platform is developed and you can migrate up. So yeah, we, we had a few of those. Some we kept in house, some we moved over. Uh, we just had to make sure that when we were working with our expedient partners, that those particular boxes, those particular applications uh, were fenced off and not part of the, the normal maintenance routine for fear of you know, breaking. And I think that's that's kind of the key there is that when we look at these sorts of, you know, uh, these applications, that's really one of the great the great parts of our enterprise cloud is that you don't have to refactor that app. If you have any VB6 app and it's critical to your business, as old and broken as VB6 can be, <laughs> we can still host that for you. You don't have to change it. You can gain those capabilities. And I think that's actually really important. And I think you're, I think you're absolutely right. There's not, you're going to, you're going to run into these things. That code might be old. That application might be critical to the business. The person who wrote it might not be with the company anymore. And you don't exactly know what you're going to break. Uh, I actually saw a video of a guy who said, uh, he's like, I, I got this apartment and it came with this can of beans and a can of tomatoes on top. And it was in the cabinet and I couldn't figure out why. And then I went to go use the can of beans and the shelf fell down. <laughs> right? So you don't know. These sorts of things, you don't know. You might not know that sort of thing. So it can be very, very, uh, it can be very, very challenging. So Hugh, I want to thank you for your time here. We're going to wrap up for today. I want to thank you for your time at Airs. I really do appreciate this. This has been a great conversation. Um, I want to get. I want to do a, a quick giveaway. I'm going to. We're going to go ahead and give a prize to Mark Mann. We will give a prize to Mark Mann. Congratulations, Mark. Uh, thank you for uh, attending today. We really do appreciate that. Uh, Please join us next week. Uh, I'm pretty sure Hugh's, Hugh's going to want to join us next week as we debut our multi-cloud firewall. Um, Hugh's very excited. He got to see a little bit of it. Uh, we're going to debut our multi-cloud firewall. Please join us next week to see much, much more about this. Uh, and we will see you then. Thanks. Thanks, all.